Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video, movie review time, Thor, Love and Thunder. What's it like? Is it any good? Should you spend your money, stick around, and you'll find out. Now, I'm not, I'm not a great fan of these uh, kind of Marvel Studio superhero films. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is I really enjoyed Thor, Love and Thunder. The third thing I want to say uh, is I went with my favourite movie buddy, my son Joel, and he hated it. Now, normally we come out of the cinema, right, we get in the car, I start the engine, we sit in silence for a little while, and then he says, what did you think, Dad? And I said, I really liked it, I thought it was great, I thought Chris Hemsworth was brilliant, I thought he deserves an actor, etc, etc. And... Um, Normally, uh, Joel and I, we, we generally agree about the film. I said, what did you think? He said, I fucking hate it. I thought it was shite. So, we have a divergence. Now, let's start with one thing. I haven't seen, I believe there were previous Thor films. I haven't seen them. Uh, so I had some difficulty uh, working out what the story was. I think I kind of got it towards the end. But in terms of uh, how we got to this point in the story, I think you probably needed to see the previous films. And I don't think they should do that with a film. I think a film should stand alone. So that, that's one point I wanted to make. So what 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 was the what was the story? Well, there, there, there's there's a baddie, uh, there's a baddie whose whose daughter dies, and he feels he's been betrayed by the gods. So he wants to get back at the gods. So he gets a magic sword from somewhere. I don't know incidentally where he gets the magic sword from. Anyway, it's a sword that can kill the gods. So he kidnaps some children. Don't ask me why, but he kidnaps some children, and Thor has to rescue them, and he has to get the other gods to help him, although for various reasons they don't and it ends up in a big battle as these films always do although the big battle at the end didn't go on for far too long that most of them do so what did I like about it well what I liked about it actually is I thought it was quite funny I thought it was quite witty I thought what Taika Waititi the uh, director who also part wrote the, and part wrote the story as well kind of sent up the whole Marvel studio thing. So there were, there were quite a few jokes in there. I mean, they weren't particularly funny jokes, but there was quite a few jokes in it. There's quite a few funny lines in it. And everybody kind of sent themselves up a bit. Now, I think one of the things that Joel didn't like about it, he thought that Taika Waititi was making fun of people who kind of liked the Marvel Studio universe, you see. Now, I didn't, I didn't get that feeling. My feeling was that uh, the, the, the Disney Studios, Marvel Studios, had thought, look, we're making shed loads of money out of 13-year-old boys who love these, these kind of superhero films. What about if we found a way to make shed loads of money out of older people who might get, you know, the, the jokes, might see the film in a different kind of way? Uh, and so they did that. And to me, it worked. To Joel, who's, who's 21, by the way, he's not 13, um, it didn't quite work, but that's the divergence bit between them. There's a couple of things that, that I thought about the film. Now, one of them is a wonderful film by the Coen brothers, which is called Barton Fink. And Barton Fink is a, a screenwriter who goes to Hollywood in the uh, 1930s. And he's supposed to make, uh, uh, because he's like a, he's been a big successful novelist, so he goes to Hollywood as a scriptwriter. And the film they want him to, to, to make is about wrestlers. So he goes to see the producer, because Barton Film doesn't know what to do. And the wrestler says, men, the, the, rest, the producer says, it's men in tights, right? It's a wrestling picture. What else do you need to know? Men in tights. And Barton Fink goes away and he sits down in his room with his typewriter and, he, and he's got lighters blot. He can't come up with anything. He goes to see the producer. The producer says, it's men in tights. What's the matter with you? And it's, to me, it's like Taika Waititi goes to see the, the, the Disney people and uh, he says, oh, I don't know what to do. And, that, and they say to him, it's men in skirts. You know, it's, it's big muscles. It's, it's a fight. It's a battle scene. It's a baddie. You know, what's the matter with you? Go away and make the bloody film. And he says, oh, no, I don't know what to do. And he goes back to see him. They say, it's men in skirts. You know, there's a love interest. You know, it's, it's, you know, there's kids. You know, there's a battle scene at the end. You know, somebody lives, somebody dies. But, you know, what's the big deal? Go away and make them. So that's one thing I thought about. There's certain similarities with Barton Fink. 
The other thing I thought is, if you're of a certain age, you will remember this is Spinal Tap, right? Which is a film that kind of sent up the whole heavy metal rock business back in the early 1980s, I think. Was it Rob Ryan? I think it may have been Rob Ryan who made it. Anyway, this is Spinal Tap. Wonderful film, you haven't seen it. And there are bits of, of Thor which reminded me of This Is Spinal Tap because there's quite a lot of heavy metal music and there's quite good use of Guns N' Roses, by the way. Um, and they they build these kind of these kind of really over-the-top sets and they're really over-the-top battles with this kind of really loud heavy metal rock music going in the background. You think, I'm watching, I'm watching Spinal Tap. And Chris Hemsworth is like the lead singer of um, Led Zeppelin or... or um, what was that? Um, the Iron Maiden is that the one with the one arm drummer? Funny enough, th- there is a joke about one arm. There's Natalie Portman plays a uh, a scientist, and for some reason, uh, I mean, she's the love interest of Thor, and she develops superpowers like Thor. I, I don't, I didn't get that. I didn't get how she did that. Anyway, she did, but when Thor first sees her, she's she's been in a battle. And uh, she's lost her arm, right? a bit like, you know, the Black Knight in Monty Python. And she says, oh, I'm going to Val- Valhalla. And Thor says, you can't go to Valhalla because you're going to do that if you've been killed in battle. But he says, your arm might go to Valhalla. Now, I thought, I thought that was actually quite a funny joke. Not particularly original, but I thought it was quite well done. But that was one of the kind of jokes that's, that's in the film that, if you like... Um, 13 year old boys would kind of gloss over but but kind of older people might think hey oh, that's actually quite funny you know even though for the rest of the film is shit i'll enjoy that the element of it so to me the fact that it it sent up the whole kind of superhero thing the way that uh chris hemsworth as thor doesn't take himself too seriously I actually enjoyed, and I thought Chris Hemsworth was was brilliant. Actually, I thought he was really good. Well, I, I haven't seen him. I may have seen him in stuff before, but not realised who he was. He looks like one of these kind of big, big, muscly, you know, steroid enhanced uh, wrestlers. Allegedly, they they may not take steroids, of course. And um, that you see on on World Championship Wrestling, he looks a bit like Chris Jericho. If you remember Chris Jericho from a few years ago, he may even be around still. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe maybe Chris Hemsworth was a wrestler. People will tell me about that. But anyway, I thought he was really good in this film. I thought Natalie Portman was really good in this film. Um, Well, she was all right. Uh, Matt Damon has a a, a small part. And that bit, there's a couple of bits that reminded me of Ricky Gervais' extras. The way he gets uh, kind of famous actors to sort of play themselves and send themselves up. Well, Matt Damon was in this, kind of doing a kind of Matt Damon character. And there was another person in it whose name I can't remember who was in one of the other... Uh, Loki, that was it. I can't remember the character who played Loki. Anyway, he he was in it. But the one thing I didn't like about the film is Russell Crowe plays Zeus. And I saw a film w- with my wife, funnily enough, a couple of nights ago called A Good Year, which was about uh, a, a house in, in Provence that is inherited by Russell Crowe's character. And the thing I really didn't like about the film was Russell Crowe. And one of the things I really didn't like about Thor, Love and Thunder was Russell Crowe. He, he acts in a kind of, uh, a bit like how Brian Blessed character is, is, whether he's put on a lot of weight in real life or whether he's just put on a lot of weight in this film or it's all CGI, who knows. But he's this kind of big character with big, big hair and, and big beard. And he, he has this kind of silly, silly voice for, for Zeus. And whether that was sort of another joke that perhaps I missed, if you like, maybe the 13-year-old boys got that, but I didn't get that that joke. I'm not sure. But either way, I didn't like Russell Crowe in this film. The other thing that I didn't like while I'm talking about things that I didn't like is, is John always makes me sit through uh, the credits because there's, you know, one of these final scenes at the end of the credits. And there are two scenes in this, one of which is, is about Zeus, who's actually not dead, who is not dead. Um, who uh, gets hold of Hercules and Hercules is coming back so he's in the next film and then the final final sequence after all the end of the credits is when Natalie Portman does go to Valhalla uh, and she meets Idris Elba who's again playing this kind of character out of extras you know he's, he's, he's not sending himself up or rather he's sending himself up but doesn't necessarily realise he's sending himself up does that make, does that make sense? 
So there's a couple of things that I didn't like about the film, but generally I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I thought it was uh, enjoyable. I thought it was a good laugh. I thought it played against type. It was the only one of these Marvel kind of superhero films that I tell you I'd actually enjoyed as opposed to wanting to sit through because I like going to the movies with my son. But Joel thought it was shite. So there you are. You pay your money and you take your choice. Thanks for watching and see you next time.